hey y'all um happy monday i hope y'all are doing okay um so uh, it was good to see you all again last week um especially you colin um so we are going to go on to our next topic when we're going to be talking about how christianity went from a sect or branch of Judaism to its own world religion. And we're going to look at four reasons, four possible reasons as to why that happened. So um, you will probably want to get a piece of paper of some sort to write down some notes. Um, I didn't put one on here for you because it's kind of just four reasons. So I write them down somewhere where you can keep them, have access to them later. Um, but first, we need to go back over who this man is. Um, if you remember when we did the early part of Judaism, we talked about how Abraham was the one who led the Jews, led the soon-to-be Jews, out of Mesopotamia into Canaan or Israel, and he was seen as the founder of Judaism. He has another, he's also connected to Christianity. Um, Christians see Abraham as one of the first prophets who helped establish what would become Christianity. So Abraham to Jews is the founder of their religion. Abraham to Christians is one of the first prophets who kind of helped Christianity spread. Um, so just remember who he is. And obviously we need to know who Jesus is because Jesus is Jesus and he is important to Christianity because he is one of the first who came around and said that other people besides Jews can be accepted by God as Christians call as call him. So Jesus is kind of the founder of Christianity in it, obviously, but he's a little bit more than that too. Um, so after he, Jesus died, um, Christianity was still one of those small religions in modern Israel that was in trouble with the local Jewish community, the Roman empire, um, a lot of people didn't like like Christians. They didn't really understand them. They didn't see what their point was, what they were trying to do. And so they were just generally hated by a lot of people. Um, and so we are going to go over the four of the reasons why we historians think Christianity spread from a small group in Israel to one of the major religions in the world. Um, there's four of them right here. First reason number one is the treatment of the Jewish people in Ro in Israel under the Roman Empire. Um, the treatment of the Jews by the Romans were fo they were forced to make by the Romans forced Jews to make a decision about the future. Um, we briefly touched on it, but if you remember, the Jews had the two temples um, and they were both destroyed. The second time, it was destroyed by a Roman army after the jews in jerusalem the capital of israel decided to rebel and as part of their punishment for rebelling the romans destroyed the temple and other parts of the city um and so this forced the jews to basically move out of israel and they had to make some decisions um about the future of their religion, because a lot of them saw this as punishment for their sins, in a sense. This was God punishing the Jews for some wrongdoings. Um, and so they had to make some decisions, and obviously this, these were not easy to make. Um, some Jews said, why make changes? We don't need to make changes. Everything's good. Um, yeah, we kind of lost our temple, but everything's good. Others uh, who were not as optimistic said no we need to make some changes because this is a sign of god that we've done something wrong and those people would be the ones who would advocate for new rules and new ways of doing things they would become known as christians so the new christians expanded on the idea of who could potentially become a member of the religion um jews all traditional jews are very very strict on how who can become Jewish, how you what you do once you become Jewish, uh, traditions, all that stuff. And so, new Christianity kind of was more progressive in that they allowed more flexibility into their religion, more more people, more ideas, 
And so this was one of the reasons why I was able to spread is because Christians were much more open to outsiders than Jews were. Uh, reason number two, this man, uh, Saul, or Paul, I guess, uh, he was a Pharisee, which is a group of Jews who strictly follow the teachings of the Torah, the, the Jewish Bible. And he was tasked with finding and killing Christians. He was traveling to with a group to the city of Damascus, which is the modern capital of Syria, where he is said he was blinded by God and given a message that essentially told him what he was doing was wrong. And he needed to do the opposite of what he was doing. He needed to promote Christianity. He needed to stop killing other Christians. And that his new mission in life now was to promote Christianity. And so God blinded him for a minute, told him this, unblinded him. And Saul was so convinced that he had talked to God that he converted to Christianity, changed his name to Paul, and became an apostle. So Paul goes on to spread Christianity through several journeys across from an empire and writes 17 books that would go into the New Testament of the Bible. Um, so if you've read, if you've gone to church and you've read some of the New Testament, odds are you've read things written by Paul here. Um, and this gives you just an idea of some of the journeys this man took promoting Christianity. Um, you can kind of see he goes all the way to Rome, throughout Greece, uh, modern day Turkey, Lebanon up here, and so on. So he traveled extensively promoting Christianity to, to the world at the time. Um, so he took four different journeys. Um, you can read through some of these churches he visited, Corinthia, Galatia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae. Um, and these, all his trips and letters were to support the local churches in these cities and to promote Christianity. Tell them, hey, here's what you need to be doing. So arguably the greatest influence to Christianity spreading was Paul. Number three, common language. Uh, his journeys and letters were extremely important, but would have been much more difficult without a common language to help spread the communicate, spread the language and the ideas. Uh, this At this point in time, the areas he visited were under the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire spoke Latin, uh, but a lot of people also spoke Greek. And so Paul was able to spread his message in Greek and Latin. So having the two languages allowed him to reach more people quicker and at a level that they could understand. Um, so he was able to travel and communicate with people. Um, if you've ever tried to talk to someone who speaks a different language and you don't know what you don't speak that language as well it's it can be tricky um so having a common language definitely helped him do that and then the last reason is reason number four is the roman emperor constantine um he played a big role in spreading christianity through an empire um so around 312 80 so about 300 years or so after the death of jesus at a battle known as the Milvian Bridge, Constantine claimed that he had a dream with a cross displayed across the sun and a message from God saying, conquer by this sign. So he, Constantine, replaced his banners with the cross and easily won the battle the next morning. Um, Constantine saw this as a sign from God, made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire, and encouraged its spread throughout the empire. Um, and so part of that was in 325, he called the first council of Nicaea, where they formally established what it meant to be Christian. Um, so argue, I would argue the two biggest influences were Paul and Constantine here. Um, so that is actually all I have for you all as far as today. Um, tomorrow, we will be starting a kind of assignment on the spread and, and other things and how Christianity was treated under the Roman Empire. Um, so be prepared for that. Um, if you all have questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see you all back on here tomorrow. Um, hope you guys have a good rest of your, your day and I will see you all tomorrow.